Welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays. 3 Minute Thursdays are a short breakdown of topics that you will see within your flight training here at UND. The goal is for you, the student, to have a better understanding of what it takes to become a safe, professional pilot. Hello, my name is Tyler Lauer. I'm a lead flight instructor at UND Aerospace. This week on 3 Minute Thursdays, we are continuing to build our fundamentals of holding. In the last two episodes, we talked about rate and how ground speed changes the radius of a standard rate turn, and then how to properly enter the hold. This week, we are going to discuss how to connect the dots between the inbound and outbound turns. There are two rules of thumb when correcting for the wind in the outbound leg and which rule you use depends on what type of hold you're executing. Before we talk about the rules of thumb, you may be asking, why can't we just track the outbound course by using the wind diamond? Well, I'm going to answer that question as we discuss timed versus distance holds. If ATC clears you to fly a timed hold, you multiply your wind correction angle by 3. This means that if your inbound course is 180 and you are flying a heading of 190, you should correct your outbound heading by 30 degrees. A common mistake is to turn the wrong direction for the wind correction needed. In our example, we needed 10 degrees to the right on the inbound, which means our outbound we need to fly a calculated 30 degrees to the left. So if our outbound course is 360, we now need to fly a heading of 330 for proper wind correction. If ATC clears you for distance holding, use two times the wind correction angle. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why is this different? Here's why. When flying a distance hold, you are typically flying four or five nautical mile legs. These end up being longer than timed hold outbound legs, so you don't need as much wind correction. Remember, the radius of the inbound turn will not change whether you are flying distance or timed holds. However, if you overcorrect in the distance hold, for example, using three times the wind correction, you will overshoot the inbound course. So if we are using the same scenario we previously used for time holding, the inbound course is 180 and we are flying a heading of 190, giving us 10 degrees of wind correction to the right, by multiplying 10 degrees of wind correction by 2 for the distance hold, we now have a new outbound heading of 340. This will accommodate the longer outbound leg so that we will still end up with the same standard rate turn on the inbound leg. Wind correction is crucial to flying a successful hold. You may be seeing a trend here. Understanding the wind will help us to be successful in all phases of flight. Using appropriate wind correction in the outbound courses accommodates the change in radius for the outbound and inbound turns. Using your wind diamond to track the outbound course does not account for these changes. As pilot in command, you need to be able to think outside of the airplane and put yourself in the best place to be successful. Tune in for the next episode as we bring all of this information together in real world examples of how to fly a hold. Thank you for watching 3 Minute Thursdays. If you have a topic that you would like to see covered, please comment below. Remember, fly safe and we'll see you on the flight line. Multiply your inbound, nope, wind correction angle, here we go.